Brandon. Good morning. Good morning. We're live. Instagram, good morning. As I'm checking my phone. <laughs> Brandon Molson. Justin Smith. What's Woo! Up? Another day. This is good. You can hear me, right? Yeah, perfect. No sound check, just mic on, camera on. Yeah, didn't even give you a warning. I like it. Sweet, dude. Everything good? Yeah, you? Yeah. I'm uh, getting excited. Fishing show this weekend. Yeah. Is it is it good to go? Or so far, it's, it's on. Okay. Vendors are happy. They're getting responses back because... They, they weren't for a minute there. Everyone thought it was uh, not happening. Okay. Uh, today is set up, so I hope it's happening. Cool. Yeah. No buy That's Expo. Right. It starts uh, tomorrow. No kidding. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow's the day. Cool. It starts later in the afternoon, I think, to like 8, and then all Friday, Saturday, I think it's like 12-hour days, and Sunday's a 10-hour day. Okay. So if you guys are going to the No buy, uh, Fishing Expo, be sure to, as we're wandering... You'll see us? Yeah. We'll be there. We're going all four days. We'll make an appearance. At least two. Most days. <laughs> yeah. Because the, the good seminars that I like to attend, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. So. Oh, well, I do know um, Ashley will be traveling down for at least one of the days to meet us. And uh, some guys from Ohio are going to come up, and they want to go to the show. Who's coming up from Ohio? Jimmy and crew. Oh. Yeah. He's looking Jimmy. for a couple new rods. Oh, I bet he is. He bought a nice walleye rod last year for like seven or eight hundred dollars. I you know, I don't even understand why you do something like that, but to Jimmy, he that's so he wants to go back to that same and I, I wish I would have thought about this before, but he wants to go back to that same manufacturer of custom rods and see if they can do something for him for like a steelhead rod or something bigger. And he's also looking for a new eight weight, uh, fly rod. Jeez. He's thinking of going clear water Orvis or, um, Orvis. Uh, I forgot what the other one's called between the clear water and, um, the Helios. The Helios is so sick. That's what you rock, right? Oh, yeah. Not the 8-weight, though. My yeah, the 5-weight. Yeah. Which is still a nice rod, though. Oh, yeah, my 5 weights. That's that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you almost cry before when it broke. <laughs> oh, I was devastated. <laughs> yeah, dude. I really was. And that was, like, weeks or, you know, just, a, what, a couple months before we were going to Montana. Here I am, think I'm going on a, you know, trip of a lifetime and not able to use my baby. Mm. Shout out to Orvis for an awesome, awesome uh, warranty program. Quick though. turn time, five. Like they were, I think, what is their policy? Like back in the water in five days or something. That's insane. It's pretty solid. Is it for all rods like that, or like they didn't take five days in the clear water, but they did that Helios man. Oh yeah, right back. <laughs> same day shipping, same day receiving. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to get a new five weight. Going to move up to the clear water on this one. Oh nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm not good enough for a Helios yet. Well, but there's a huge you difference. Use the five weight a lot more than than the eight weight. Yeah, but when we were in Montana fishing, though, man, like using when uh, you let me borrow it a few times, you can, there. I mean, there's huge difference. Like it's night and day, really. The uh, oh, did something just get fixed? Um, no the the furnace. Oh, interesting. Yeah, one of the main vents right above you. Gotcha. I could hear it. Oh, not anymore. Hey, we're live. It's all <laughs> yeah. There's no coming, There's no coming back. There's yeah. no edit. No, There's no, no, no like click. Wait. Yep. Yeah, nope. All good. All right. So, um, wait. Were you? Uh, did you have a thought? Um, when I was talking to Jimmy about the the difference between rods and reels and whatnot, I was telling him it's worth spending that kind of money if you're going to do a lot of dry fly fishing. That because loading the rod. Oh my gosh. That loading that rod and the control is there's a big difference there. But for an eight weight, when you're chucking ducking or you're just doing a, a roll cast and floating for migratory fish, you know, I wouldn't. I mean, pray. I'm. I don't have that kind of dough. <laughs> do, no, I definitely no. don't. I definitely don't. <laughs> but um, hey, if you do, <laughs> go all out. But I just no. 
Do I want to look at uh, is good. uppers and lowers in the for some um, at that fishing show? Oh yeah, for uh, ice, the ice fishing jacket and pants and the yeah. bibs. Yeah, they have really good deals. There are some. Show. There my so my neighbor who's who's a member now of uh, Network Outdoors. He has a very serious ice fishing setup. I mean, compartments all over the place. I, I didn't know it was that. I mean, they, they put some thought into how you're going to be bundled up and some of the things that you're going to need to do while you're bundled up. They thought about it all. <laughs> I have a tactical backpack that's waterproof and all that. Oh, nice. There's so many compartments in it, I literally forget where I put things. <laughs> I spend more time finding yeah. than I do putting in. Yeah. It's unbelievable. All right. Well, today, Brandon, we're going to we're going to talk some cooking, some food recipes. You got a lot a lot of wild game right now. Well, it's it's uh, you know, we talk about can't wait to put all this meat in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's do it. Fish, 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 fish. Provide, provide, provide. Things. Yeah, we're butchering stuff and we're coming up with all these ideas and we're we're vacuum sealing and it's just it's awesome process, and you, you pull out the marker and you get it in the freezer, and then what do you do? You got a freezer, and it, it's it's awesome feeling. Like I've got a whole freezer full, but then it's like, let's try some stuff this year. And every every year, I, I say, oh, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna get into grinding my own or making my own sausage. Haven't done it yet, but I think we have some ideas. And you've you've put a lot of time in lately to figuring out different recipes to try with wild game cooking. So first of all, I actually, my There's first cookbook. Right oh there. yeah. You guys, you guys got to check this out. This is actually more of like an art book, but Steve Rinella's the meat eater cooking book is awesome. Dude. It's so sweet. He tells like stories in it. The, oh, the photography is just, it's unbelievable. The but, only thing I've, I've gotten from him is, uh, Oh, that's the fishing and game cookbook. Yeah, oh, I bet you that thing is gold, dude! It's amazing. I did, the pictures I got the, in here, uh, the small game, um, it's unbelievable. I forgot what the book's called, but it's a small game book. There was a small game, big game, and then I think he came out with that after. This one, yeah, my, mine's like the whole intro, and I mean from start to finish, how to prep, hunt, butcher, cook, small game. Um, I guess. You, you mentioned that I've been spending time per se, but we're, we're talking about going small game hunting, coyote hunting, et cetera. Yeah. Um, we're, we're fans of, uh, what you kill is what you eat. Yep. Right. So coyote predator. And then I remember Lauren and I were watching, uh, I, I didn't remember this. Lauren just found the video, but dude, Steve Ranella cooking coyote. Coyote jerky. You never hear about people doing No. That. And then, so I did a quick search this morning on the internet and that? a ton of recipes. Oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> I like couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. It even, it, you can go on past page 10 in Google and there's all coyote recipes. Huh. So it's, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. But ca- Cajun coyote. Well, jerky. I mean, you, you rock some Cajun, any, any kind Dude. of Cajun rub on, you know, come on. Anything. Yeah. When I, when I think of squirrel, it's like, dude, throw some hot sauce on that thing over the open flame. Okay. Literally just, you know, dress it, all that, wrap it in foil inside the carcass, cook it, smoke it, and wrapped in tin foil. Yeah. How long? Low and slow? Like, or yeah, no, like, like grilling it. You can grill it okay. like 15, 20 minutes maybe. And then you use your fingers, pick it out of the carcass. Frank's hot sauce. Frank's. You got a side of Hidden Valley. In Valley, that's a plug. <laughs> would you ever, would you ever make like boneless chicken wings out of it? Boneless squirrel wings, is that a thing? I mean, sounds good. When you start talking about buffalo sauce or Frank's with a with a side of ranch, I naturally go to. Uh... <laughs> hey, we could ask Dan. Yes. We, we can ask Dan. We, we should have Dan on here talking about the different recipes. That, cause what, what is he? The, he's a judge for, is it the world? Or is it, not the national. I'm pretty sure it's the no, world. No, it's like, yeah, global. Yeah, like all of the world uh, squirrel cook-off. Yeah, and then he had the rabbit it's one. Like down in Arkansas, something like that? Yeah, it is, it is down south. Man. 
that story yeah. he's telling, he was at the airport and he had his t-shirt on and they're like, oh, what are you doing here? And he's World like, championship squirrel cook off. Yes. He's like, I'm a judge <laughs> and no one's taking him seriously. And he's like, no, for like, oh, we got to have mine. We got to give him a call after this. <laughs> we do need we to talk to him. figure this out. Talk um, squirrel the whole time, but you found something. Buffalo fried squirrel. Yeah. There we go. Buffalo hot legs with squirrel or rabbit. Yeah. I mean, like we're going to be putting in the time. I just believe like what you hunt, you consume. So it's off season. We're going to get into what we already have in the freezer. But right now we're talking about things that we're about to go hunt. Yeah. We just can't get enough of it. <laughs> Where's the squirrel? <laughs> I know. I told my dad, I was like, dad, we're coyote hunting. Right. And uh, I was like, hey, we're eating it. And he's what? No. I'm like, okay, you're like the biggest advocate that I know in my close, you know, family network where you're always like, what you kill is what you eat. Yeah. So I'm like, dad. Hey, I saw, I saw a. Speaking of the meat eater guys, they ate raccoon. Dang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that just brings you right down to, like, am I doing enough? <laughs> <laughs> right, like, <laughs> dang it. Uh, that's commitment. I mean, commitment, like, full-blown committed to the lifestyle. Yeah, like, eating a bunch of squirrel totally makes sense. When you start throwing in raccoon, it makes you think, dude, should I be doing this? Or, like... Am I doing enough out there? Have you ever uh, eaten beaver? No. There's a beaver tail recipe in this book. I was just thinking beaver. Yeah. Interesting. I've I've never I've so I've never trapped. I've never even tried. I have them at my house. I have no idea. I know they need to be real rusty and like boiled and all sorts of stuff and left outside for a period of time. I've never I've never done. I've never trapped. Do you have an opinion on it? I know. No, we got to stay on topic here. <laughs> Till next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So what do you have? What, what, what have you? So right now you have some deer, probably a bunch of fish, ton of fish, uh, lake trout, salmon, Lakers, lake trout. So Lakers talk to me about that. A lot of people don't like it. Dude. It's, it's a, it's a little bit of a game year walleye. Okay. Really? Yeah. Like, it's uh, why, why do you think um, a little bit tougher? Because they're mean, anything they're big. with wall. I, I wouldn't have thought. Cause I, so I've never had Laker, but I've had a lot of walleye. And anybody that any ever talks about trying or eating walleye prepared anyway, never has a negative, like a never negative outlook on eating fish. Well, why would you? If Laker's not good, why? I guess I'm I mean, it's um, it's just a little bit tougher. Uh, from my experience, a little bit more of like a gamey taste to it. Does it taste like fish or does it taste like walleye? Fish. Okay. But like not where, let's say you're at a restaurant and, you know, I don't know if you've ever had it. You ordered like a type of fish from a restaurant. You can just tell it's just, I don't know, not good. It's not like that. You can tell it's fresh, but it just has a fishy, gamey taste to it. Okay. Um. We've uh, grilled it, and then we've smoked it. Smoking it on, like, a apple bacon piece of wood, something like that, really helps with the flavor and the taste. Uh, I mean, smoking lake trout, just smoking trout any, in general. Is, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Smoked salmon, smoked anything. You know what has to happen this year? What? Uh, whether it's somewhere around the Midwest or when we go out west this year, is from river to fire, like, in minutes. Oh, when we go out to Montana this year for two weeks, we're definitely bringing a smoker, barbecue. We're, we're doing, we're making it happen out there. I cannot wait. Like I see, I, we watch all these shows and everything, and they're just like they have all the equipment to just cook right there at you know whether it's camp or like Riverside. And I don't know, it's just something like the art of it all coming together. We drove out there last time in my truck, but this time we'll be pulling the camper with the. The whole solar setup, we can go anywhere. Yes. Riverside, bam, camper, drop down the stabilizers, start fishing. I hope the Madison River gets back yeah. going. Um, so, yeah, Lakers, salmon. What's your favorite way to make salmon? I loved pan-seared salmon, like blackened, oh. like a Cajun pepper mix. You put a blackened oh, yeah. seasoning on it? Yeah, and just <laughs> smack that on there, a little, little rub. Wax nice. on, wax off, and uh, maybe like no I longer did black than two and minutes. Walleye. I don't think I did. Uh, 
I've never done blackened. I don't think so. Salmon. It's good. I bet. I mean, if you're comfortable enough, I mean, you technically can eat the salmon raw. Yeah. Sushi in a way. So not even like a minute each side, two minutes, maybe like flip, hold down. My wife likes the char on the, like if I come in with it out and I'm not kidding you, like the filet, you, you go both sides on it or no. She, she wants the, like the, the small side. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what the technical term of that is, but there needs to be a grill mark on that bottom. (laughs) Yeah. And like the edges have to be like charred. Interesting. And then she's like, okay, it's done. If it's not, I don't know if that's done, Brandon. <laughs> huh? We need this raw. <laughs> hey. I mean, hey, she's eating she's eating it. She's a gamer. She'll she'll uh she'll try whatever you put in front of her. It's it's my goal is to get her to like it though. I mean, we had a venison dinner together and she really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she gets excited about a you know what? She doesn't like so what I did last year, I put uh I put pork pork fat into the burger the venison burger this year i didn't because the the deer that i had processed had enough to to add in she doesn't like it as much interesting mm-hmm. did you notice a difference in the way it cooked uh not the, the not the way it cooked but the way it ta- it does taste different i like it i mean she she doesn't dislike it. It's uh, it depends on how it's prepared. So we're talking about that today. So our go to is like, let's let's pull out uh, a pound of venison and make uh, if we're making tacos, nachos, pasta sauce. Uh, I like I like venison burgers. Like literally just and, and not like putting a bunch of stuff in it. Just really yeah, just a like regular burger. Yeah. Love it. And so what do we have? She, we didn't use like, and we'll do like different taco seasonings and fajita stuff. And I mean, we, we do all sorts of stuff, but this particular time that she tried it last, we didn't have a lot of seasoning on it. Okay. And she's like, eh. And oh, it was for pasta because it was just like a pretty bland. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you think it was? You can just taste more game for sure. But venison though? Yeah, no, it's good. Oh my gosh. And then in nachos and tacos, it's it's golden. You can't beat like venison nachos. Yeah, anything venison with the Mexican. Oh man, every time it's Dude. so good. Yeah, um, you actually a couple weeks ago you made it and you posted it onto the social, and then I saw that, and literally the very next day, that's what I had for dinner. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like I was like, oh, because that's all we have left for deer. By the way, is a couple packets of. Well, uh, I was gonna bring you. I'll, I got you. <sighs> I got you. Especially since she's like turning the corner on me and being like, well, I don't know if I really like it. <laughs> it's not going to work. I know I'm not going to rip through a whole deer by myself. So. Well, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ah, that's awesome. And they actually butterflied the, uh, so I, I didn't process it myself. I've never done that. I plan on trying to do that this coming year. I've got some friends that will, that are all gung ho about helping out with that. But um, my go to, so I want to do steak nachos. Not just burger nachos. Okay. Um, pull a pull a couple steaks out of the freezer, thaw them out, cook them to a, like a medium rare, and then throw them on some nachos. And my go-to nachos, we're talking cookie tray, like a baking sheet. Hell yeah. Uh, and and I used to like when I was when I was younger, I didn't you know they're my they're my mom's bake, so I didn't I didn't put any tin foil down, burnt the crap out of her, all of her nice cooking baking sheets. Now I, you know, I pull out the, uh, the tin foil, so like the non-stick stuff, and layer it with uh, some tortilla chips. I literally use probably almost a whole entire, like, you know, they're they're this big. I almost use an entire bag of cheese. Love it. I can't get enough of it. And you you layer it with cheese, and then you put the meat on it, and then put some more cheese on top of that, so it's like stuck to the golden. You know what would be really cool for a, a deer camp meal? What? Like get a table, like a fold-out table. Yeah. And uh, I've seen those videos online where they, like in an island in the kitchen, they just put everything on the island. So they lay down like some type of like tin foil or waxing paper, and they build it, the nacho, right onto the table. Nice. So it's like a big like buffet. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Yeah. 
That'd be great. Yeah, I don't know. I think that'd be a good time. Um, you have walleye in the freezer, right? Yeah, oh yeah. What's your uh, what's your go to walleye? Oh man, I not the healthiest, <laughs> but I love fried walleye. Oh, it's the best way. <laughs> but I'll, I mean, I'll bake it. I'll pan sear it. I'll I'll do anything with it, but putting a nice batter together and then trying different batter recipes and, like, levels of spice, <laughs> that's my go-to. Yeah, I've been messing with uh, – I use Drake's for the for the batter. Yeah. And just literally, I like that batter. I like the consistency of it. I think it tastes good. But then just m- messing around with what type of spices go in it or making it, like, really spicy or maybe more of, like, a tangy – like more lemony. What do you uh, What do you use for? Um, you use like pake, uh What was it? Panko. So what do, what do you What are your bread crumb bread crumb choice? So I'm actually not a bread crumb when I fry it. Dude. What do you do? Like just it's just like a batter. Oh okay. Yeah. So uh, I baked it with panko, but never never deep fried it. Have you used bread crumbs to deep fry? Oh yeah. Oh, see? oh yeah. So I'll, I'll do a, um, the last time I made it and my favorite way to make it, pancake batter, okay. pancake mix. And then you, you get it around with pancake mix and then some other stuff. I forgot what kind of milk it is, but it's like a, it's like a concentrated, thicker milk that you actually add in with the pancake mix. Hmm. That's what you make the pancake mix with. It's interesting. But you do that and then you... Um, dip the fish in, and then you put it into the, the breadcrumbs. But I've tried um, panko. I've tried uh, – what's, like, the healthier version? It's like uh, – well, there's fish fry. Oh, yeah. Of course. So I've tried <laughs> a fish fish fry. There's this um, – man, I'm, I'm – it's, like, flak seed or something like that. It's, uh, like, flak chips or yeah, something yeah. like that. It's, like, the healthier version yeah, of, like, flexi. instead of uh, fish fry, you use that. And then uh, frosted uh, cornflakes. Come on. Oh, yeah. No, that's a real thing. Will you crunch or them up? frosted. No, they, they actually sell like a a, thi- like a a frying package for them. What? Yeah. Yeah, but you can use cereal. So you're using like cereal and uh, uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the pancake stuff? Aunt Jemima stuff. Love yeah, it. I mean, that's a go. That's like. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait, have you done with the frosted before? Yeah. Can you like taste it? I mean, I don't know if it's if it's as sweet as you're thinking, but it, okay, it's just something different. Interesting. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, dude, but deep fried walleye. I'll post a picture of what I used one time, um, and it's still probably my favorite recipe put together, and it's a hodgepodge of a bunch of different recipes. Oh, it's fire! Because <laughs> it it was like it was spicy, but not at first. And it wasn't too spicy where it's like, you know, take it easy. Yeah, too much. But it was yeah. spicy enough where it's like, I still want, I, I, like, I can't get enough. Like, is my second bite going to be just as good or is it going to be hotter? It was, it was good. So the initial bite was not as spicy. Yeah, it kind of, like, heated you up a little oh, bit. Oh, dang. All oh, right. It was like a slow roll. Dang. Yeah. Like, spicy. I should have given it to my neighbors because what I did is, uh, I forgot if I told you this, but I went fishing one day and... We, we caught limit, and there were some decent-sized fish, and I put them all in one bag. Okay. Well, that's way more than my wife and I can eat. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, should even try to eat. That's just – so I literally started calling up my neighbors and running over paper plates full of fresh-fried walleye. I that's mean, they, awesome. They still talk about it to this day. Dude, that's – yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, We have found – so for – you obviously have a little human in the house, but yeah. for two adults, we found like four to six fillets. So three to four fish, depending on the size. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, do we can smash deep fried wall? Oh, my oh God. yeah. Yeah. The problem was, so we were, we were fishing this, this particular time. It was Lake Erie and they were all like 21. One was 24. There's bigger fish. It was just a lot. Yeah. Versus like your 17 to 19 perfect eaters. Oh. So, yeah, you were 
But I, I feel like that size fish, I mean, I I don't have a lot of experience down in Erie. With the 24s? Yeah. Or, like, bigger? Bigger, yeah. yeah. But, like, when I fish Detroit River, Lake St. Clair, I'm staying somewhere between, like, 17 and 19. Beautiful. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. No bone. I mean, it's just, it's great. Yeah, the bigger ones, you, you'll uh, you'll run into some bone. I'm not great at filleting either, but. Yeah, no, I, I think it's like, away. yeah, it's just like, you know, when you're field dressing a deer, taking its practice. You, you mentioned my caught, baby. <laughs> Earned it. And you, and you know what type of gloves not to use yeah. next year. Not the ones that my my wife, who's in the medical field, gave me thinking they were just surgical gloves. And they were no. like, she started laughing when I told her about it because I was like, no, that's what you use when you're pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, except when I put them on, they all broke. Cut himself while he was inside the uh, deer carcass. Yeah, not that those any gloves would have stopped that knife from going through skin, but all good. What's your favorite way? For walleye, dude. Yeah, pan, deep fried. Yeah, man, like love it. Yeah, it's. I do. I do like pan searing too with the walleye, but deep frying. So like, there's been a couple times we'll have like walleye multiple times a week. We don't deep fry them every time. Yeah, Maybe, you know, keep those arteries. Uh, Fresh it's and hard clean. not to though. Right? Yeah. Dude, literally. And and also, this might be critiqued or frowned upon, but we even where we deep fried it on um, one night and we had a couple pieces left over. I threw it back in the deep fryer. Oh yeah. 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 It was fine. Nice. Yeah, it tasted like it did the Warm night before. Up. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like putting it in the microwave, it would have got a little bit like soggy or something. That's or, a good call. I've never done that. Or put it in the oven, 350, put on a baking sheet for like 15, 20 minutes. So I, I usually do that when yeah. I'm warming up fried fish. Because I mean, we had so we had a lot. <laughs> I mean, just in... We ate it the next day for sure and like ate a lot the next day. Yeah. I made a, it was great. I mean, between the two of us and the amount of... I mean, we're not at like the limit by any means of what fish we have, but like we have a lot of fish. Yeah. So no, freezers, are, freezers are looking good with fish. What do you do with um, – did you, did you go perch fishing this year? Nope. So I'm not like a huge perch for fishermen, but – I don't have perch either. But Ice fishing, hopefully. Oh, yeah. So – We're going to uh, have to head north. Hopefully, yeah, because right now it's not looking good. Dude, it's going to be 52 degrees next week. Oh, my gosh. They're killing us with this roller Rain. Coaster. It's it's brutal. Right now it's Michigan snow, snow covered for sure. Southeastern Michigan is snow covered, but um, – and it was in the teens yesterday. But when you go back up to 50-something, you don't get a break. We have to go north. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share on our social for all you out there that are going to take a look at this. There has been a number of accidents going through the ice. In, Wait, already? Oh, yeah. Minnesota, North Dakota, uh, Houghton Lake. Yesterday, Houghton Lake. A side-by-side. Minnesota, North Dakota. We're live. Sorry. I said a check, make sure we were oh. still going. <laughs> um, keep going. I apologize. No. Um, so if you are getting out there on the ice, be really, really careful. So every year, um, I've been back in the shores since like summer 2016. Every winter, you can tell when the cop, when the, the choppers are coming in to rescue. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, um, I'm all for being adventurous, getting a little bit of adrenaline, adrenaline rush, being uncomfortable, but two inches of ice. Come on. Yeah. No, there's no way. I no. think what happens is a lot of people do not understand the depth situation of Lake St. Clair and how it's extremely rocky close to shore. And people don't understand how quickly that water can change. So you got two, two inches of ice moving water. I mean, there's, there's a current there because Detroit river and, like uh, St. Clair River. Yeah. Clint. People just, yeah. People don't get it. Clinton River, yeah. Yeah. Especially around there, dude. Yeah. I don't Clint see those. Yeah. Right there. But the, because the Coast Guard Still station's there. right here. So you see them taking off and they're, mm. I mean, they're not going up to cruising altitude. They're going to save somebody's life. And that's a constant thing. Even when I'm sitting on, so right now there's a place where I ice fished last year. Um, What is it? Uh, Ost- Osti, oh man. Ostiogo, yeah. Osti, I've, S-T-O-S-T-E-G-E-O or yeah. O or something, yeah. <laughs> Ostego, Ostego. Yeah, something like, so yeah. there's a nice, there's a couple little lakes around there, 
and uh, a friend of mine just just texted me saying that there's eight inches there, so I think we're gonna be heading up there soon, next week or so. Uh, pull through or- some uh, panfish. I want to I want to target crappie this year, but we're talking about cooking. So panfish, my favorite way to do it, fried again with ketchup. Dirty. Don't. Dirty. Come on, man. <laughs> you just catch pull up, up. A, pull up a bunch of bluegill. What? Oh man, it's so good. I'm telling Everyone you. watching, or they're gonna watch. It. I'm really sorry about this. I'll edit it out. No, <laughs> for real, ketchup. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything mixed in the ketchup? No. No. No hot sauce. Mm-mm. Nope. Just fried panfish with ketchup. Um, it's fire. So, I'm talking crap about ketchup. Uh, not a ketchup by itself person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, like the, the special sauce for like fries, ketchup and mayo and you mix it together. Yeah. Yep. Something for salmon is ketchup, uh, sriracha and mm. mayo. And then you can put in some spices, mix that up. It's almost like a, it's not a, it's a, not a tartar sauce consistency per se, but like a substitute. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet. Yeah. Oh Man. my gosh, dude. So I guess I shouldn't have talked as much crap about ketchup. What is your favorite way to make one? What's your favorite cut of a deer? Backstrap. What's your favorite way to make it? Pan seared. How do you, what do you do? Dude. How do you, what do you, what kind of seasoning do you put on it? Dude. So like a Cajun salt pepper and then a little bit of paprika. Salt peppers go to on just, oh, yeah. just everything. Just assume there's salt and pepper on it. Dude. When uh, Lauren and I were, we do that, uh, hello fresh yeah. and everything is salt and pepper. So now anytime we cook like any type of meal outside of those types of things, we pepper and salt. Yeah. Um, get it really hot. I have a, use a, the same skillet cast iron. Uh, it's a uh, cast iron. It, it is cast iron, but it's coated with okay. something. To, no, not cast iron. Okay. <laughs> it's cast iron. No, no, not cast iron. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting something like super hot. So yeah, cast like, iron is just... yeah. So it had, dude, it's not cast iron, but in the middle, it has this iron, like these like rings for it. Anyways. Okay. okay. Get it super hot to where it's like practically smoking on your stove. Six to eight seconds each side done. I'm not kidding. Six to eight seconds. Each side, and then take a, like your grill spatula, your metal spatula, and just press it down and Isn't hold it. Isn't that called like Pittsburgh? Like a certain way to like prepare a steak? Where it's like raw basically, but you hit that, and it's so hot. It's like, it's like 500, 600. It's like 600 degrees. Let me look this up. Pittsburgh. We're Googling how to Pittsburgh a steak. So, yeah, the outside of the steak is charred. While the inside remains rare or medium rare. Yeah. And at times rare plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I Pittsburgh it. Favorite way to cook backstrap. Shout out to my days back in uh, in college working at Outback Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. oh, oh man. Dropping it. Dang. Well, you, dude, that brings you to the point about cooking. So my very first job ever was actually in a kitchen. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, what? frying chicken, flipping ribs, cooking them scallops. Deep fried potatoes, chicken check. Thank chicken you for check. teaching me everything I know. <laughs> and then when uh, when I was at State, or uh, Central before State, I worked at the casino before I worked in the bar and worked at the steakhouse there. Dude, learned so much about cooking meat. Mm. It, I mean, it was a nice restaurant. I don't even know if it's still there, but learned a lot. I want to get better at the smoking game. Like, I'm, I'm not, uh, I've done it with uh, fish, wild turkey, I haven't brought in like select cuts and really dug into it. I want to get better. Just One like, of those like tra- uh what is it, Tragen, tra- um, Tragen grills. Okay. Where it has um actually a neighbor just down the street. Really? Yeah, just got one, and it has dude. It has the ability to hook Bluetooth up to an app. Tells <laughs> you what the temperature of your meat is. <laughs> That's on a whole different level. Dude, Saturday during I'm like... I'm just talking about a little burn box and getting a roll going. I'm just saying it's pretty crazy, the technology out there for <laughs> cooking, for for smokers specifically. Yeah. I don't really know much about smoking with like the pellets or the... Yeah. I don't know much about it. Do you? No, no, I don't. 
There's I, just I, so I just much keep weight. It, yeah, I just keep it simple, but I want to. I want to get into yeah. it. You know, like well, I, I can smoke. I can. I can do all sorts of stuff, but I want to like get into it. Um, you brought up like wanting to get into to butchering and yeah. you know processing your own deer. Uh, Warren's family was in town this weekend. We were talking about that, and there's a butcher shop up in like, uh, you know, northern mid Michigan area, like Claire Harrison area. Yep. And uh, he he was bringing he he brought up the comment of it's becoming a lost art, in a way of like business commercial. Like, I mean, you have like your main corporation butcher houses and stuff, but like the smaller mom pop type shops. And uh, he was telling me the story about how, essentially, like when people, no matter the age, like us walking in, hey, we want to learn how to do this. No, like you start off being like the butcher's bitch. Yeah. Like. Uh, learn how to sharpen knives, how to the different parts of the animal and what, what these meats and everything. And then like, eventually he said it was about a 15 to 20 year process. Mm. Right. Wow. And then I start seeing like, I have buddies that are starting to do it and they bought the machines to, you know, process it and create jerky and all that stuff. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I think it would bring like the whole experience of like the hunt and everything you do, the prep, and then having the ability to process your own, like, you know, kill. Well, I think Miranda, uh, was trying to do a good thing by getting me that game, that game table, the game. Yeah, yeah, table yeah. With like the sink, you hook it up to the hose, the bucket under it. But here I am thinking now, can I turn that back barn into a game processing facility? Dude. Walk-in freezer. You start aging stuff back there. <sighs> It could it could get uh it could get completely out of hand. Dude, a cigar bar in there. That's what I'm talking. about. Yeah, that's I mean that's where I'm you know I'm I'm already trying to do the basement, but that's that's already been nixed by the family. So I that think, would actually I be really backyard. cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. yeah, that would be awesome. Definitely possible too. It doesn't have an upstairs place. Too. Yeah, so you could you could keep stuff up there aging. It, it could it could be it could be fat. Yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you could do. What I didn't, what I said I was going to do this year, and I didn't actually in 2021, this uh, waterfall season, I did not pluck a duck and cook the whole thing. I really wanted to do that, and for whatever reason, I didn't do it. So, um, in this process of pluck a duck, uh, do you boil it? Are you gonna? Is it one of those things you boil, or you just no no boiling? No boiling. Yeah, just pluck. Um, the reason I ask is I I read because when you boil the fat off it. So the I boiled goose before, yeah. and it made plucking a lot easier. Yeah, no, I mean when I when I'm plucking anything, I'm I'm just you, you get going, and then you take a little torch. Oh, and get the rest of it off. Yeah, you're notorious for one of I think it's hilarious every time you tell me you do this, but you'll be like you'll go hunting in the morning, and then you got like a family thing at like 12 <laughs> and you roll up into the driveway of let's say your aunt or uncle's house still camoed out still like just came from the field and oh, you're yeah. just sitting on the sitting behind on the bed truck just flip the <laughs> tailgate down yeah. sometimes cardboard sometimes not oh just, my gosh you know get a get a garbage bag out to take any feathers in and you know the feathers are all over blowing the around and stuff yeah bloods all over my hands i'm using a you know field knife and so funny and they think it's savage, but I'm sitting here thinking the whole time, this is going to be delicious. Yeah. So speaking of waterfowl, um, I don't have a lot of experience cooking it. And what's your, what's your like, go-to for cooking waterfowl? Another thing I didn't do this year is, and I, this is, this is shameful. I got to, I got to admit it here on the, on the right. live in the podcast. Last time I went out duck hunting, I got a buffle head. Okay. And I was excited to try to cook it to where it tastes good. And so here's what I do with any waterfowl immediately. So let's say we're just breasting. Take the breast out, salt water for I do a day. Some people just do a couple hours. I do a whole day. So I'll, I'll cut I'll I'll cut the breast out and and then little straps. So there's there's four pieces per duck. Drop it in some salt water, and I eat a little. Um, I do like uh, those glass containers that kind of snap on the. Yeah, yeah, yep. Put it in the refrigerator from whenever you brought it home until the next day. Pull it back out, and you know when you when you breast it, you wash it off, try to get it good. 
but once you pull out the next day, that that water's it's red. Oh yeah. Oh, it rips. It's blood. pulled. It's, yeah, I would say it's great. pulled a bunch of stuff out. Yeah. Pull that out. Uh, um, wash under cold water. Get anything excess off, and then I'll uh, either cook it then, right then and there, or I'll uh, I'll throw it in my uh, vacuum sealer, and then put it in the freezer. But that's my go-to with everything, whether it's a, a diver, uh, you know, mallard, wood duck, doesn't doesn't matter, teal. That's what I'm doing. Same saltwater. same amount of time, even for like a diver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Salt water. What I didn't do this. What I was going to do with the diver with the buffalo head. I was going to do the salt water and then milk and then cook it right away. Okay. Ah, oh, I don't know what happened, but I left it in there for like a week before remembering it was in there. And I had to throw it away. Brandon. I know. This is just, what a waste. I was, I was pretty upset. Yeah, actually. no, I mean. You know, it's just, it's so, it's stupid when stuff like that happens. But I got, I got caught up with just different stuff. And uh, I lost track of it in my, in my refrigerator. Which is a very interesting place. Yeah. I didn't even find it. My wife pulls it out. She's like, hey, weren't you going to? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh. Now I have to throw it away. It's clearly not good after yeah. What's the milk do? I was told that was a good way to um, soften the fishy blow. For divers? Mm. Yeah, pretty fishy taste. What's interesting, though, I heard bluebill is, uh, is, is pretty dang good, which is a diver, Arctic diver. But um, when you get in, like, buffle heads, red heads, um, those, like, hardcore sea ducks around here that are just eating, yeah, fish – no good. I got my first bluebill this year during uh, the Harsons Island hunt. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. They go underwater and. Oh, divers will. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't have I don't have experience with divers. I know we shot divers this year, but to see them like. He went down, went underwater, stayed for a minute. I'm like, oh, they do this thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, where they grab on. Yeah. And. Yeah, they'll stay down there until they expire. Yeah, and uh, he didn't or do that. Swim. Up to a half mile away. Well, he swam, not a half mile. But I was out. It was crazy. I was out there walking to go get this duck. And we didn't have ducks for the first, I don't know, 45 minutes. Are you talking about during our event? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm out there waiting, not like being sneaky or anything, just doing what I'm going to get this duck. A group of like five come in. And I'm turning around. Another guy's in the blind are like sitting there, you know, yapping. All of a sudden, I'm like firing up. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm trying to get this duck, guys. But anyways, uh, it's a really cool looking duck. Yeah. Uh, my problem so far from cooking waterfowl is when I'm brining it. I'm assuming that I'm using too much salt or not putting the good ratio of water to salt. But I've had an issue with it tasting too salty. Like when I'm cooking it. Really? Yes. And it's not like I'm adding a bunch of salt to it. I don't know. I'm horrible at cooking goose. Just haven't figured it out yet. I think so I'm cooking it too well. The only way I found it, yeah, probably. The, the only way I found to do it is literally like a steak on the grill. But, you know, people talk about pan searing because I, I love pan seared duck. That's that's a that's my favorite way to prepare. Yeah. At, do it outside though. If you have a if you have a burner on the uh, on the grill outside, do it out there because duck it's smelly. Oh, it's gonna set the fire alarm. Yeah, off. smoking gonna, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So. Preferably outside, then bring it inside for a phenomenal meal. But it, it might get a little uncomfortable because there's some blood that will be on your plate. I don't know how y'all like to prepare stuff, but overcooked duck is not very good. Uh, perfect cut or perfect cooked, perfectly cooked, perfectly cooked is uh, oh, it's a treat. Um, I've been reading a lot about uh, like the different types of sauces to put on. Like, for instance, like cranberry on, like, maybe, like, a mallard mm. wouldn't be good on a diver. And it's the way – it's kind of like when you're, you know, red or white wines paired with certain meats or fishes and stuff. It's kind of like that. So I thought – yeah, I found it really interesting. So I, I was reading it in this book, and then I obviously dove on the internet. And it's literally, like, matching wines to meat or fish. Yeah, there's, like, orange marmalade that you can make. Yeah. And there's, there's, some, there's some recipes out there that are really good. Um. But I thought that was interesting. And then... Have you ever cooked the whole thing? What? Duck. Like, no. Either I've had it before. I've never cooked or it. Or have you left the fat on the on any of the organs that you've cooked? No. 
Not on, not for waterfall. Yeah. Oh yeah. But just for waterfall. Yeah. No. I, I have never. Either. That's what I was hoping to do this year, and I just, I don't know why I didn't do it. I mean, um, I have to give kudos to you because you're the one that's really gotten me into waterfall hunting. It's fun. I've done goose before you, but not like on purpose. We didn't do much goose hunting. Now that we're partnered up with some goose guides. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. We're Those guys up in uh, goose hunting next year. up in the thumb. Oh yeah. yeah. Their content is awesome. Yeah. The amount of... Last pass guided. Yeah. They're great. I hope they I hope they dive right into it. Just... Oh, yeah. They already bought the... They, they're, they're going... They're full going full-blown. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, there's they're some, they're some young guys still in school. They're just doing it as like a weekend thing. But uh, next year, I think they're going... They're going to try definitely every weekend and then multiple times during the week throughout the season. Season here starts in September, so you, you go through. But ne- you know what? Next year, I would like to. Uh, I heard snow goose is real good. I've never tried that. I just want to. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen one, let alone hunted for them. Yeah. So I think that would be really cool. Lauren and I think we saw one a couple of years ago up at uh, Tuttle Marsh there, right Probably. down the street. Yeah, it was in the winter time. We think. I mean, they are flying like a a Canada goose, just. Clearly not a Canada goose. That make they make different noises, yeah, or sounds, whatever. Which freaked me out too. When I first <laughs> saw that. I'm sitting there in the deer blind. I'm like, what in the heck is that? Dang. Yeah, because I've never gone out like some of these guys go out to uh, South Dakota. Yep. You know, you get and you you have the stick with the white bag hanging off it as a decoy. That's pretty cool. They're yeah, a lot, they're a lot smarter. The Canada goose geese are a lot smarter around here. I mean, you have to spend a lot of money. On some goose decoys, silhouettes, but they even they even catch on to the silhouette game. You got to get full bodies out there, which are not cheap. Oh yeah, they're pretty expensive. Versus a stick with a white bag flying. Interesting. I want to. I want to. I want to get a pheasant this year. Pheasants. Oh, one last thing on goose. Favorite way to make it. So I said like a steak. Yeah. But salt, pepper. Cajun. All right. Soy sauce. Okay. And ginger. What do you do? Do you uh, like grate the ginger or you just. No, I've used. It's just all. That would be an interesting way to do it. But no, I didn't do it that way. It was just all seasoning. So uh, sometimes what we'll do is, and I don't like necessarily. Dried seasoning. So we'll use, instead of the dry, like uh, I don't know what it's called, but like take like a cheese uh, grater and like. Uh, uh, zesting oh yeah, yeah lemon or like a or a ginger on there dude and uh put it like how you would put it in a pan with oil and garlic dude do that with like garlic and ginger or garlic ginger lemon <sighs> yeah no i'm i'm all about that i'll have to make it because i i even got miranda to like it the goose yeah dude failed miserably and Over, I felt so bad. Overcooked ba- goose is disgusting, dude. And Lauren was like, "I was really excited, dude, because oh. I was like, man, like I we got it off the property up north. Like this was, yeah, this was an Oscoda butte, right?" <laughs> Steve, Steve put it in his mouth, like he wasn't sure what to do with it. But anyways, I was like really excited about this. Steve is a dog, just to oh yeah, yeah, very <laughs> clear about that. <laughs> good, yeah, yeah, clearly Golden is good. Retriever. Golden retriever. Uh, he put it in his mouth, you know, it was kind of cool. And he was really interested in when we were cleaning it and all that. And then uh, I get home, I'm cooking it, I'm fired up. And Lauren's just trying, she's muscling through it. And then finally I'm like, oh man, it's way, way too salty. Huh. Dude, yeah. so I don't know if it was, I don't know if at that point it was the uh, brine or it, but there's no way I put too much like soy sauce on it though. Like, yeah, it wasn't well, like I was sitting there emptying the whole bottle. Well, like, I mean. In. Yeah, so uh, kind of like how you wasted. Uh, but you tried it. You cooked it. You tried. Yeah. It, you gave it a go. I literally just forgot about it in the refrigerator, and they got caught up in the back. Somehow it got pushed to the back. When you have a one and a half year old and bottles and stuff flying around, you know things. You save everything with a baby. Oh, that kid didn't eat that that uh, that one French fry. Yeah, it's coming home with me. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped up in. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he didn't. Oh, you're you're done with your food, but you still have some on your plate. I'll take that home. He's he'll eat it, dude. I used to go to church meetings and they had like cookies and some, put cookies on a napkin, eat it for later. So the same <laughs> yeah. thing you do for the baby. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, that kid yeah. Sp- threw it on the floor and scrape it back up. Oh, and, my gosh. I'm a savage when it comes to that stuff. The kid eats everything, though. It's unbelievable. Dude, he loves wild game. He does. <sighs> oh, so he's tried everything we've talked about today and likes it. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't. So we made um, pasta sauce with, uh, they, they weren't ravioli, tortellini. And she didn't really like it that much with, uh, with the uh, venison. Henry couldn't get enough of it. That kid's face was covered. I mean, just in sauce and at, like, for lunch, dinner. He, I mean, he ate. Me and him crushed the rest of it. When uh, Lauren and days. I, when Lauren and I came over and you guys and you cooked the venison meal for us, and Henry's at the table just eating the venison with his fingers, and I'm like, oh. it's more manly than what I'm doing right oh, now. Yeah. He's got a shirt off. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah, dude. He's just like <laughs> smashing this deer. <laughs> I'm like, see, that's how it should be. Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> likes fish. He likes salmon. He likes walleye, of course. That's good. Just get him to try everything. Um, what is something? We're gonna wrap this up soon. What is uh? What's like uh? Has to happen this year when it comes to uh. Hunting, but then also the eating part. Like, is is there a besides like the snow goose? One is, thing I'm gonna do, and it's actually in a month. Oh. Month and a week, month and two weeks. Going uh, wild hog hunting down in Texas. Oh, previous podcast, you weren't sure if we were from a helicopter. Definitely not from a helicopter. Oh, yeah. yeah no, Cody, you got your answer, not yeah. from a hel- is it Is there a night? Is it night hunting? So it's we're staying on a ranch, and it's a cattle ranch. And, uh, I mean, it's it's thousands of acres. There's, there's just different stuff to do on the ranch, but there's um, – Day, night, all, whatever you want to do, they they hand you a AR fifteen platform and you know let's let's get going. There's blind set up. There's I'm sure there's I don't know if there's feeders. I'm I'm sure there's feeders to to get them to come around. But um, no, we're scouting. We're riding side by sides to find these babies, and then we're setting up. Dang! But I am very excited to get that thing. I think they skin it for a hundred bucks or something like that, and then they uh, butcher it up. I might want to. Learn how to do that before, because I would love. Are you gonna keep it? Hundred percent. You gonna? Are you gonna? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna fly, fly back. Fly back. Oh yeah, I don't care how expensive that is. Like I, I want to get whatever I get out there. I want that back in the freezer. Dude, you should get the head done. Oh, I'm gonna get the head done for sure. It's going on the Cabela's wall in the basement. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're going out there with uh, the the Deacon of Ducks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. I'm just yeah, kidding. Fail. Hey. Dude, totally kidding. I'll get us in for a, for a Rio hunt, though. We'll eat some for turkey? turkey? Yeah. So. Dude, that um, would be amazing. I want to get a turkey here to wrap it up. I want to get a turkey here in this uh, this coming, um, this spring. And I want to I want to cook the whole thing. Not, All right. Uh, yeah. Not yeah, yeah. It up and even, well, you know, here I am talking about I'm going to do this with a turkey if I can shoot one. Because last year I didn't. But this year, I'm going to in Michigan, and I'm going to cook the whole thing. I love... Well, take the hat off and the you know that stuff, but... Yeah. yeah. I love fishing, but I'm so excited for spring turkey. <laughs> Dude. Um, We're going to do some ice fishing, though. That'll be, di- that'll be newer for, for us. Oh, yeah. I mean... Definitely for you. you, you I know. mean, dude, like, I wouldn't say any of the ice fishing I've done when I was younger would, like... I've done it, but I'm excited this year because I'm going to learn. Your neighbor has mm-hmm. some really cool stuff going on when it comes to ice fishing gear. I think he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So, and then. Uh, we're going to pull some heads through the ice. Dude, we're uh, trying to run that event over in, uh, was it Metamora too? Yep. I know we're, we're not going to talk about that too much yet, but that would be fun. Kind of like a tournament. Ice fishing House, tournament. Yeah, that would be Anybody so Anybody out there that is wants to compete in ice fishing, don't worry, neither of us are a competition, but we'll be part of it. So just take our money. But at the same time, we'll have a lot of fun. I mean, pretty much anything we do. It's a private lake. What is it? I think it's like a 55-acre lake, private. Or it might be even a little bigger than that. But it's it's uh, it's stocked and professionally managed on a 1,000-acre like private ranch. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. But we're going to do an ice fishing tournament out there. <laughs> I'm going to have my own T-shirt. Yeah, let's get some ice first, but God, it's right? coming. It's coming. Even if the season's four weeks, we'll have Dude, ice. Dude, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. But it would be sweet to get up 
The Last dude, year, those, I think it was only six weeks. The whole thing, even up north. I think his uh, Instagram's like hippie. Some oh man, hippie mountain man. Yes, dude. Yeah. Those uh, pictures and videos of him up in the UP ice fishing, pulling like unbelievable brookies. I think his name's Tristan. He's the he's the um, head dude for uh, trout Michigan trout addicts. Yes, he's dude. pulling through tiger trout or um, splake. Very so you got a you got a bucket list uh, yeah. in 2021, and then that's like your target fish this year. Yeah, yeah, dude, we got a splake and tiger, uh, tiger tiger trout. Hit up the uh, other side of the Asable over there by like Mayo. Yep. So Justin and I are gonna start our uh, our trout tour. Yes. Um, you just mentioned our first spot. Where was it? The other day you were mentioning it, something where we were gonna start it. Well, we can we can go up to the PM, but there's a little Manistee. Yeah, a little Manistee. Yeah, right by Mesick there. Yep, between Mesick and Baldwin. That'll be fun, dude. Day trips just to go. F- I mean, pretty much anywhere in the lower part of in the lower peninsula, at least. Yep. Like that's it's a day trip. Anybody who wants to join us, wants to get I mean, part of the the trout tour. Let's go. Do we leave at midnight to get down to Ohio by five a.m. to hunt for? 36 hours and drive back home. Yep. I don't know. I'll do that all day. Dude. My stomach gets so messed up, though. <laughs> For like dude, three days. Dude, literally. <laughs> and then because you're just like sitting. I mean, fishing's more active, obviously. Yeah. But like hunting-wise. Um, McDonald's on the way down. McDonald's on the way back. Oh, brutal. Dude, we got Taco Bell a few times. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I want to get a pheasant this year. I'm going Pass- pheasant hunting uh, next month. So we need to uh, connect with uh, Dan McMaster. Yes. Where are you going pheasant hunting at? Dan McMaster happens to be the president of Pheasants Forever Michigan on our pro staff. Yes, you guys, he is on our website. We had an awesome mean greet. We have some really cool plans. Yep. You'll get Dude. a pheasant this year, but I'm going in the thumb. Sweet. Yeah, with a couple guys that took me three years ago. Farm or uh, like wild? No, it's farm. Oh, all right. They're I mean, running their dogs though. That's why I got invited. Dude, sweet. Yeah, so they're they're training their dogs, and so we'll be hunting over them because we we hunted with some guys in the UP, and uh, I thought that was cool because they had dogs, but these guys are like, you want to see some dogs work? See our dogs. Work. We've been training them for a few years now. I've been so, posting some videos of dog doing work in the field with pheasants. It's an art. It's like 150 bucks for four birds a guy, and you you take the morning to walk a field. Dude, that's awesome. Cook. It's great. Very cool. Well, Brandon, any last words? I'm excited to, to get cooking. I'm hungry. No, I'm go st- eat. Oh, dude, my. <laughs> yeah, cool. let's go eat. Taco Bell down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Wild game we just talked about. Yeah, let's go get some pizza. Let's go get some processed <laughs> hey, food. thank you all for joining us. And if you do want to be on this podcast or a part of any of our events, give us a shout. Until next time. Signing off. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Network Outdoors podcast. We really appreciate your support. If you or someone you know find value in connecting with other outdoors people, please drop us a line. We'll get you plugged in. Be sure to follow us on social at Network Outdoors and subscribe to our email list to stay up to date with events and outings by visiting NetworkOutdoors.com. Until next time, signing off.